So Larry Vaught, I think you got the first one. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Brandon, can you just talk a little bit about what it's like for you pl playing with Terrence so far, how you guys are, get along on and off the court? And one more time. I'm sorry, somebody to call my phone one more time, please. <laughs> okay. Brandon, could you just talk a little bit about what it's like playing with Terrence and, you know, what it's like for you guys on and off the court? You know, on and off the court, Terrence, that's my dog. Uh, that's my brother. But on the court, we just – we always compete. We get after it. We just make each other better. And every day we're going to practice. And off the court, we just, you know, just try to keep each other's minds right, stay sane, you know, COVID and pandemic. So we, we just got each other so far. So that's all we can do is just – just stay, stay close, stay connected, and just take take care of business. Can you guard him? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go at it, Craig. I'm not gonna lie, we go at it. Thank you. All right, Jerry Tipton, we're gonna go with you next, and then John Wong will make it to you. Brandon, I've heard you described as a leader. I'm wondering, you know, you're nodding. What uh, what does that mean to you? Why do you think that fits you? Uh, my mom, see, when I, since I was younger, my mom always told me I was a leader. I just never knew like how to lead. But now, now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to, you know, take that take that role on. You know, just helping my teammates, encouraging them, uplifting them, teaching them certain things, helping them along their journey as well. And I wondered uh, the schedule came out today. I assume you guys have seen that. What yeah. what jumped out at you? What what sort of an impression did it make on you? I'm excited. I feel like a dog in a cage. Like I'm just ready to get out and go to war. Oh my guys. All right, John Wong, we'll go to you next. And Kyle Tucker, uh, you'll be after him. Hey Brandon, we've talked to a lot of your teammates already, and most of them seem to be extremely, extremely confident. You mm -hmm. seem like a confident guy. Can you describe yeah. what it's like to be on the practice floor every single day with nine or ten other guys who think they are maybe as good as you or even better than you? You know, that's the fun thing about this team. Everybody's confident. They compete. We just get after it every time we're on the court. You know, nobody takes nothing. So we just go out there and play our hearts out. And that's just the way we play. And I think we're going to have a good year with these guys. So how important do you think is confidence in terms of making a championship run? Is there a difference between confidence and cockiness? Yeah, major difference. I, I feel like the game is 70% 70, 70 confidence, 30% mental. So I feel like you go out there with the right mindset, right swagger, and right confidence, can't nobody stop you. All right, Kyle Tucker, you're next. And then Aiden uh, Alperstein, you'll be after him. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, BJ, I just wondered, what, I know he hasn't been able to practice lately because of his injury, but I wondered something specific that you can think of that, that Keon has done or said uh, or given you guys in, in the way of leadership or just kind of showing uh, the new guys the ropes. I feel like Keon's a great, you know, he brings his leadership and experience to the team. You know, he tells us the things we need to do, helps us out with the plays, helps us out with what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. He's really a big impact on the team. Just as a follow-up to that, I know he's he was, you know, happy to be sort of a voice as you guys tried to make some social statements. Is is he a guy who kind of facilitates and leads some of those conversations that you guys have had as a team? Yeah, for sure. And that comes from experience, you know, being here. But I feel like you can learn a lot from him just having a simple conversation from him. All right, uh, Aiden, uh, you've got next. Go ahead. Hey, BJ. So you played in a lot of big high school games, one to name against Chet Holmgren and Jalen Suggs. How, yeah. do you think, how do you think those big games will help you prepare and then eventually have success in the college level? Well, I feel like playing those big games and then big arenas with all those people, I feel like it's helped me tremendously because, you know, in the college level, it's going to be arenas just like that. So I feel like that just helped me prepare and just act like I've been there before on the next time I play. All right, Jerry Tipton, we're gonna circle back to you and then Larry, I'll come to you. Yeah, hi, uh, what, uh, you were uh, named to the watch list for the Julius Irving small forward. What'd you think of that? 
you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be uh, on that list, but I feel like there's a lot more work that could be done. And I wonder too, you're number three, why, why number three? I wonder if that has a sentimental attachment to you or why three? Nah, three, I feel like, see, growing up, it was 11, but I feel like three was just, I had to switch it up. It's, it's just a new beginning, so it's my, it's my new number. I really, but I really don't even play for a number. I play for the last name on my back, on the back of my jersey. All right, Larry, you got next? For UK fans who haven't seen you play, kind of describe what they're going to get to see and then what do you think is a fair expectation for you this year? You know, I feel like I'm bringing the confidence, the scoring, the playmaking, helping my team win. I'm just play winning basketball, play on both sides of the court, uplift my team, and just do everything I can to come out with the W at the end of the game. And, and what do you think is a fair expectation for fans to put on you about what you should be able to do this year? Uh, I wouldn't really put any expectations on me. I just tell them to come, to, come and watch the game. I put on the show every game. All right, so we're going to go next with uh, Tyler Thompson, and then Jeff Drummond, you'll be next. Hey, Brandon. I read that uh, your most prized possession is a dollar bill you keep in your shoe. Um, yeah. Can you give us the story behind that? No, I just, I've been doing that since the sixth grade. Just putting the dollar bills on my shoe every time I play. Because I, I always get some Skittles before I play. I need candy before I play any game. So I'll have just a dollar bill left over and I put it in my sock and play in. Is it the same dollar bill the whole time or do you yeah, yeah, get them I in and out? I get, I get it the dollar bill at the beginning of the year and just keep it the whole year. All right. Thanks. All right, Jeff Drummond, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Brandon, there's been uh, a lot of talk that uh, Cal watched a lot of the uh, NBA playoffs in, in the summer and into the fall and has incorporated some of that stuff into what you guys are doing. Have you have you seen some of that just from what you watched on, on TV to what you're doing in practice now? And how does that kind of apply to your game? Yeah, definitely. He always stresses me about moving, flying off uh, screens like Tyler Harrow and Duncan Robinson just getting straight straight to the basket like Jimmy Butler was doing, just the movement of our offense. It's like, so, yeah, they're not, it's not really, it's not really different. So it's like really some of the same things. So I feel like me, me watching it, me playing it, so it's, it makes it easier. All right, uh, Grant Grubbs, you got next. Hey there, Brandon. Um, so you're known for having a diverse offensive skill set to your game. So what is something that you and the coaching staff are kind of focusing in on to add to your game? Add to my game, just getting straight to the basket, shoot quicker, having a quicker release, having a higher, uh, and just having just going out there and playing my game, honestly. Thank you. All right, next up, we're going to go with uh, Adam Hipsky. Hey, Brandon. Obviously, the schedule just got released. Uh, is there a certain game, whether non-conference or conference, that you're especially looking forward to this year? No, not really. I feel like I'm looking forward to every game this year. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, hold on just a second here. Uh, Joel, you've got – Joel with the Columbia Missourian. Go ahead. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? How are you doing? Good, good. Now – uh, like we talked about earlier, the schedule's been released today. Uh, you've got some old friends in the SEC, uh, including Sharif Cooper, uh, maybe some guys that have uh, played AOT with you in the EYBL. What is it like playing against those guys now on a bigger stage? You know, it's just going to be fun because from all the past years, all the hard work we put in, and now we're here playing on the D1 level, and it's just it's going to be fun, and we're going to compete. Okay, we're going to circle back around some follow-ups. Uh, John Wong will go with you, and then Aiden, I'll circle back to you. Brandon, throughout the recruiting process, your name was always at the top of the list. What age were you when you finally realized that you were pretty darn good at this game, that you could play at an elite level? Uh, I would say my eighth grade year, 
this is really the year I was like, I really locked in on myself, you know, just training hard and just trying to get better every day. I feel like that, that was the year for me that I just knew like, you got to put the hard work in in order to be the best. Cause my dad, yeah. see, my dad used to wake me up in sixth grade. My dad used to wake me up because we had school at eight. He would wake me up at seven. We go shoot at the YMCA at seven thirty, and I would walk to the to the middle school to be three minutes away. So I walked there and just start school. And we've been doing that ever since, just getting up earlier than everybody else. Can you give us your first memory of Kentucky basketball? Uh, I came here on an unofficial visit my ninth grade year. So I just came and watched them practice, and it was just awesome. I loved it ever since. All right, Aiden, you've got next, and then Jerry, I'll come back to you. So playing with Amari Bailey and Bronny James, highly talented players in high school, despite the talent, you still had a lot of success. And now coming to Kentucky, you'll be surrounded by more high-profile players. Do you think your game will only elevate? Uh, I feel like me growing up, I played on a pretty good team my years growing up. So I feel like I'm used to playing with the kids that are as good. And I feel like just coming here, I'm going to just play my game and do what I got to do to help the team win. Okay, Jerry, uh, back to you. And then Jack Pilgrim, KSR, you got next. Yeah, would you just to elaborate on that? Uh, what's a Bronny James's game like, and uh, how about Dwayne Wade's? Uh, how, how, describe them as players. You know, those two. Hey, are guy, hard. hey, hey guys, just a heads up. He can't. He, he cannot speak about them. Respect to uh, student athletes, guys. Sorry. You got something else, Jerry? No, I'm done. All right, uh, Jack, you got next. This summer, you started working out with uh, with Devin Askew out in California, and then Terrence Clark flew out, and, and you guys kind of lived, lived together for a couple months. What was that uh, process like, and how did that kind of come to fruition? No, it was good just getting early working on my guys. I feel like that's helped us till now. So I would say it was just a good time. You know, we just getting good work in, competing, and just getting better at focusing on the craft. What was it like living with with Terrence? He he kind of told some stories about you know some some habits that you had. What were some some habits that that Terrence had that you kind of didn't know about that you know you think could possibly help you guys during the season? Nah, it was just the first day he came out that we just clicked like we've been knew each other for years. So he's just a fun, entertaining. He loves to laugh. He loves to work hard. That's just the things that I do. So I feel like it's gonna help us in the season just having two guys with the same mindset, so I feel like it'll be good. All right, Kyle Tucker, uh, you've got next. Yeah, we, we've we've heard a lot of buzz now, obviously about you and Terrence, but increasingly also about Isaiah Jackson. What, what has been the most eye-opening thing you've seen him do on a basketball court since you guys have all been together? <laughs> that guy is a pro. He's a professor. He... He blocks every shot. He has like a seven dollars. He has a long wingspan. He blocks every shot. He rebounds. And he just does what he has to do at the five position. So he can shoot the mid range. He can shoot the three if needed. He's a good all around player. Guys, we got about five minutes left here. If you've got a question for Brandon, Larry, I'm going to come to you. And then Aiden, you've got next. Brandon, your your move out to California for your senior season obviously worked out well athletically but what about just just as a person did it did it change you any help you any in that way also yeah so I actually moved to California because I have a little sister and a younger uncle who still lives with me so I guess just moving out there just helped them you know they're going to grow up with the kids out there just better networking better area it just it all fell in places going out there but I would say it, it helped me Mentally moving out there helped me come, come more at, at peace with myself. You know, I just I started meditating. I meditate every morning and night, and it just helped me just focus on myself, get away from everything that I know, and it helped me tremendously. Thanks. All right, actually, Aiden has put his hand down, so we'll go. Uh, Looks like Jerry, you got another question. Go ahead, Jerry. 
Yeah, what you said about meditating caught my attention. What uh, every morning you said, how, how long each morning, how, how do you think it benefits you? Uh, I do, I used to do two types of meditation. I do guided meditations and something called praying with kid. So I feel like that helps me just center my thoughts, you know, just help me, my breathing, just help me relax, stay calm through everything. And okay. it actually helps. Say it again. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just I've just been doing that for for like a year, and I feel like it's just helped me tremendously in all aspects of life. How'd you get involved with that? My trainer at Sierra King, he actually would play it for us before practice, and it just I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys, any more questions for Brandon? I'll give it another. I'll give it a few seconds here. One once. One twice. All right, guys. Brandon, really appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you.